We're thrilled to have Tenzing Rigdal here at the Emanuel Art Gallery and have his work in this space. Rigdal is a special artist internationally, nationally, and also to Colorado. Being an alum, there's a special place for him here at the gallery. His work, Change the Celebration, was actually shown here in 2005 in his very first show, and we're so excited to have it back. We hope that you'll enjoy your time here at the exhibition and, and spend time thinking about the questions that Rigdal's asking through his artwork and think about how it can apply to you and how you can be more aware of others. I've known uh, Tenzing Rigdal's work for about 50, almost 15 years now. So I first became aware of his work when he exhibited uh, up in Boulder for a show called Waves on the Turquoise Lake. And that was a show that brought together several contemporary Tibetan artists and it was a really fantastic show. Um, a few years ago I was able to invite Tenzing Rigdal to speak at the Denver Art Museum and uh, he was just such an amazing artist to watch and he's just such an incredible personality um, that I knew I wanted to get a show put together. Rigdal's work is so important for today for many reasons. Uh, his work is not only breathtakingly beautiful and visually stunning, but his work is also very important politically. Um, he will say he's an artist and an activist, and many of his images draw from imagery that, uh, that reflects that. So, for example, in this exhibition, there is a lot of fire imagery, and that fire imagery ref references the self-immolations of 155 Tibetans over the past uh, several years. For me, technique and method is a problem because then sometimes technique or method defines the thing that you're looking at. I think technique shouldn't define the process, but rather the process should keep adopting and inventing technique. He, uh, went to school here, he was a philosophy major at one point, and he's incorporated some of those philosophical ideas into his work. What is attention? Uh, how can you improve that attention? And when you're looking at a subject matter, is there any other hindering things that would, uh, that you, that would remove you further away from the subject matter? So in many of these works up in the gallery, you'll see that the landscape of what would traditionally be there in a Tibetan Tonka painting is gone, and in its place we see manuscript pages. And that's done very purposefully. So in traditional Tibetan painting, the landscape was often influenced by Chinese art and Chinese landscape imagery. By removing that, and instead replacing it with the Uchen script, which is a script that is universally read by Tibetans, I think there's very, a very clear statement being made by the artist. Uh, he's taking out that Chinese influence. He's sort of uh, literally taking out the, the Chinese landscape uh, and replacing it with, with something that the Tibetan culture can read and understand and unify with. I, I think I think art is one of the most, most beautiful or poignant way of being nonviolent. You know, art is, you're telling people, come look at my opinion. What can be more, you know, beautiful than that? And um, also I think it teaches you how to be tolerant. And so there are many, I think, uh, many important features, I think, of art. It makes you more liberal, more open, more tolerant, and uh, improves your listening ability to listen to others' story. My World is in Your Blind Spot is about that blind spot we seem to have internationally, in that some, uh, many, I would say, actually don't know about these self-immolations and don't know about these political protests. And his work is, shedding light on, on that. Not only art is important, there's nothing else if there's no art. <laughs> Don't you think so?